Oh. See how Michael is letting him gain ground? He's letting him push him, even on the ground. Oh. But then also he's making it so fucking obvious that the dog is the one who made him do that, right? It's like clear oh. to everyone, including the dog. You made me do that. All right, we're just getting to Kent Island. That's where our first seven hour stop is. Get the view, Alex. This is the Bay Bridge. I don't know if you're familiar with the Bay Bridge, Alley. It's one of the uh, scariest bridges in America. Yeah, I'm petrified right now. <laughs> Not me. I just grew up here, but... Well, I'm good to go. Yeah. All right, we're... Uh, it, where, what are we, where are we right now? Hairpin Park or something Hairpin. like that. <laughs> Hairpin Park, uh, Ken Island. The seminar, decoy seminar starts tomorrow. Um, I'm here with uh, Brielle. Of course, the camera's out. She's got to rush over. Um, we got Alec and uh, Taylor. Carlos gets in soon. But right now, we're just enjoying the beautiful swamp view. Um, seminar starts tomorrow, so we'll uh, get back to you then. Oh, look at all those little fish and things. Are those tadpoles? Or fish. All right, we're here, day one. Where are we at, Carlos? I don't know. Oh, Kent Island. Kent Island, Maryland. Kent Island, Maryland. <laughs> you could, I don't know if you guys can see, but there's the big beast over there holding down the parking lot. <laughs> I think he's huge. Man. We claimed a bunch of parking spots. Um, so it's day one. We're going to go in and get started. Let's go. We just, well, we finished up in Maryland. Um, we're actually heading to Florida now. Um, we got, I got a ton, a ton of video footage. Not sure how I'm gonna put it together in a YouTube video, but in the meantime, uh, I got two clips, uh, one of me working a dog and one of Carlos working a dog. So we're gonna put those in here uh, so you guys can kind of keep up and then I gotta figure out what to do with all the footage that I have and uh, kind of compilate that and, and make it into something. But to hold you over, I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, it's both of us, we're all talking while we're uh, working the dogs and kind of explaining what's going on. Uh, so I'm sure some of you will find it useful. Go loose on it. So see when he tries to use his weight and pull against me, I use my weight against him. Like I'll squat, bend my knees and just lean this way. And now I have all the opposition without the handle having to pull on the lead. When I'm ready, then I can put his back legs on the ground and then he can make the choice to counter. If he doesn't counter, I remove those options. How do you do that from the back of your arm? Sorry? Same concept? Same concept, yeah. Just work smaller dogs. Chihuahua. <laughs> Frenchy. Frenchy. Did you see his name? So one of the things that I would also be aware of, like, he's not, he wasn't countering too much on his own there. He was waiting for mom's input to counter, right? So we don't, it's a good thing that he counters on that cue, but we don't want him to rely on it, right? If he's in the end of the building and you're all the way up here, he still should be doing what we want him to do. Well, sometimes we told, also told you guys like hook into the collar if you can with some dogs. But like we've been saying, sometimes opening up that surface. But if you still want to be safe, you can take your other hand and grab into the collar here. Second, the dog pushes, I lay back down. 
So there's no counter, you let me get back up. I'll get back up, it's not as advantageous for him again. See, now he's keeping him down. He goes getting up slow to give him a chance to regrip while he's getting up. If the dog doesn't, oh. there you go. If the dog doesn't stop him in the process, then he does get up. See, now he starts getting up. He's like, nope, stay down. And you see how he's putting all his weight on him? That's a sign of like, nope, like dominance, right? Like, no, you stay there. And he's laying on him. So, now he's like, no, don't get up. See? He's like, nope. And he slowly starts getting up. If he allows him, then he will finish and get all the way up, and the dog loses the top advantage. Now he's going to have to work a little bit harder to get me back down on the ground. Now. See how Michael is letting him gain ground? He's letting him push him, even on the ground. But then also he's making it so fucking obvious that the dog is the one who made him do that, right? It's like clear to everyone, including the dog. You made me do that. Like decoy is not always all at war with the dog, right? Like we're sparring partners, we have to teach them things. Not his enemy. And if you guys notice, for him to be able to move, he needs to be on the bottom head, he needs to be on the floor. How many of you guys here do you need to? That is a like, huge help in decoying work because you're very aware of your, where your hips are. So when you're on the floor, you know how to position yourself so you're not vulnerable to your back. Right? Like you saw Michael was on his back, but the entire time he was on his right hip. So if he needed to, he pulled act quickly and get away from the dog. See, like he's always on the act right there. But soon he can get up, he can pull back. Verbal out? Smoke. Verbal out? Plats! Plats! Can you keep on there? Bite, man. Stalin. You guys notice when the dog went back to mom, he quiet down. Like you can even barely hear his breathing. Even though he's breathing this hard, next to her he was quiet. Why is that? He's waiting for that command. He quiet down to ensure he can hear what she's gonna say next, right? Same whenever you hear a dog, they're like, rawr, rawr, and then they hear something on the leaves and they go, and they quiet down so they can fucking hear better. <laughs> And everything is, all the action I'm doing is contingent upon him. He has to make something happen. I'm not trying to help him. When he's going to do it, he did it because you said it the second time. He did it because of time. So if you would have said it the second time, he would have still out. And his name. His yeah. name. Yeah. Right, remember? So with her, we know, and I know Michael touched on this yesterday, but the name of the dog is a Judah saying pocket or spelling for him. What? Say smoke. Smoke. <laughs> See? It's a bite command, right? So it's great in, in operation that she can tell the dog to re a million times just by saying his name, but then she's using her name followed by out, right? So she's saying bite and go. So it can be a little confusing, right? Just the name, so if we use just the command. Yeah. Plus, here, plus. A lot cleaner that way. You can put them up. You can put them up. Perfect. I mean, fucking with him, flanking him, pinching him. So we're gonna be working on it. So we're gonna see where he's at and try to improve a bit. Walk him up. And this is why we said in those, like when they feel defensive, it can be vulnerable for the dog. So we have to be pretty careful what we're doing in those moments.
So if he needs to come up, work on me. So for first, and now let me settle in. Yes. He's going at the wrong angle, I don't like that angle. So I'm gonna grab his head and fix it. Yes. Push him this way so I can work better. Pull the angle. Yes. Marcus, so I'm gonna get him really strong on what he's doing first. Yes. So this, is, this is important before you start adding and pushing thresholds. We gotta let the dog get onto the bike, get comfortable yes. where they're at. So we have kind of a status quo that we can measure against and say, okay, something has changed. If we don't know what's changing because we haven't given him a chance to settle, there's no, so we see a little bit of change yes. there, right? Super. Countering stop. Ugh. Mobilization, let me just wait. Carlos waits it out. Yes! Uh, you get a counter. Ooh. And then fix it again. Yes! Here are those deposits in the bank Ooh. account now, right? He got stressed yes. out a little bit. Yes! Carlos is letting him beat him up yes. now that he made the right choice. And then he'll go back to that or something else again in a little bit. Ooh! Let me see your hands. Yes, dude! Yes! Ow! Let me see your hands. Oof. Good. So that, Oof. that one was hard for the dog to deal with. Oof. Carlos gave him a, a big reinforcer by, hey, you, you made the right Ow. choice. Look, you Ow. Ow. Level now. Ow. So last time when I flanked him, he let go. So huge improvement. He didn't give a shit about it. And now that he's this strong, I'll try it again. Not like single fuck. You see that? Ooh. Fucking great work, man. Let me see your hands. Ooh, yes. Ow. Ah, ow. If you don't like notice those counters compared to some like those counters are violent counters. Like he's trying to hurt. You see what we talked about yesterday? Somebody asked about the shaking. He's taking a big regrip, then he shakes. That's trying to cause me pain. He's not shaking and then pulling. You see his feet, he regrips, boom, and then after that, normally he shakes. Oh, see that? That's causing fucking pain. Oh, yes. Oh, oh. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. So you see how he's finding away from me? Going for the column. Yes. And yeah, that's using your, your environment as your Skinner box or your behavior you limiting thought device. See, he's not going anywhere. Ooh. Yes. So he wanted to get away from the column. So if he regroups hard enough, I'll let him. So See your hands, let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Yes, sir. Oh, handle it. Handle it. If you're trying to pair it with the back pressure, let me see your hands and then release back. Yeah. So, we'll do the test. Yes. 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 Yeah. Uh -huh. 